Is it better than the Porsche Taycan? Is it better than a Tesla? Would I pick one? Hmm, I can tell you so far, this is a paradigm shift for Audi. Why? Let's dig into the details in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Started with the fun topic, colors. We have three at the moment right here. This is so-called Kimona Gray, has a bluish note. This is the standard e-tron GT model, but we also have, for example, just as a visual bite for you, two RS versions, one in Daytona Gray, and the other one is Tactical Green. Hmm, interesting military style, isn't it? Then, taking a look here at the front, different stylings for that one available too. You can see here the front grille, we still call it that way, has a single frame right there. This one is held in the vehicle color. The standard would be in a gray or silver note, but you can also get it in black for a more sinister styling. Also the Audi rings either in chrome or in black available. And you can see here really wide stands on the road. LED, matrix LED, laser light. These are the steps here and we can see these are the optional top trim laser lights then with the blue accentuations. What a modern tech look here for their new Gran Turismo. And you always want to see that the cascading turning indicators or also when you activate the hazard lights really spectacular. And also a preview of the rear here with the turning indicators. Really nice in the rear as well but the front was more spectacular wasn't it? And this is here the RS model with a little bit more horsepower tuned, soon more to the power figures. Just visually, you can design both models the very same way. In this case here, we have the black styling with the black front grille insert, and also, we still call it front grille with the electric cars, yes. <laughs> and then we have the black Audi rings, but as I said, you can also use this black package for the normal e-tron GT. The length is at 4 meters 99, 16 foot 4 or 196 inches. So a really substantial length, comparable to an Audi A7, but this one here is flatter than an Audi A7. It shares the platform and technology with the Porsche Taycan, so they are indeed siblings. But is this an Audi Porsche? Mm, Technology-wise, maybe yes, but there are really notable differences, especially in the interior. Soon more to that. Then the standard e-tron model starts here with mirror caps in the vehicle color but you can also get them in black or in carbon fiber and then there are a lot of technological options which are standard for the rs model for example tungsten carbide brakes we have here today they have a special coating and they reduce brake dusk and are also better in the braking performance then 19 to 21 inch wheels these are the 20 inch wheels for today in an aerodynamic styling then other technology starting with the suspension it starts here, the normal model, with a base suspension, which is already adaptive. So when you set to sports mode, it will also get stiffer. Optional or standard for the RS, a three-chamber air suspension. The same also counts for a rear differential lock. Optional or standard for the RS. And also the same for the rear axle steering. We also have it here on our vehicle here today. So once again, not only styling-wise, also technology-wise, you can either pick directly in RS for about 40,000 euros extra, or you can start with the base model and make it somehow RS-like. Yeah, it's really your choice. But what do you think about the styling, especially with the really strong shoulders here and the very strong rear? In the middle, the light strip goes through, and then on the outside, it fades out in these single elements. Really spectacular, too. And a very consistent design here, also with a contrasting lower diffuser. 
As for the specs, you either have the base model, base model, it calls, you know, sounds like it would be cheap or low spec or something, but yeah, already has a horsepower peak of 530 horsepower and goes 4.1 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And the RS model would have a horsepower peak of 650 horsepower and goes in 3.3 seconds in the acceleration figure. Both, of course, pretty impressive. And the RS from the rear, you have the RS bed right there. And in this case, also with the carbon fiber insert. But once again, you can choose your styling more bright or more dark and sinister for both models. And as an addition, we also found the white vehicle for you. And here then you can see it even better with this, let's call it e-tron GT contrasting mask at the side and then the vehicle color front grille, chrome Audi rings and could also look pretty striking if you go for the black pack then here and put the black Audi rings on the white vehicle. What do you think? And of course the lower black diffusor also adds another big contrast, especially when you have the white color. The top speed, by the way, is 245 kilometers an hour here for the e-tron GT and 250 kilometers an hour for the e-tron GT RS. Let's call it that way because Audi officially calls it Audi RS e-tron GT. But that sounds weird, doesn't it? So five kilometers an hour difference. Our American friends just have to remember both a little bit over 150 miles per hour first find a highway to drive that. What both models have in common is the battery size, 93 kilowatt hours growth or 85 kilowatt hours net. This will deliver you this electric range of about 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Recharging, there's a charging port here on the co-driver side, 11 kilowatt standard, optional 22 kilowatt, I think they should have made it standard with 22 kilowatt, it takes about five and a half hours for a full charge, then DC charging station, up to 270 kilowatt and this would bring you 100 kilometers or 60 miles in five minutes that's of course pretty massive then if you have this maximum charge and you get a standard here on the other side another ac charger if you would have the uk model it would be the other way around then you have the dc port also at the driver side and the other one at the co-driver side key you know it it's a standard audio key but it's really good quality with the e-tron batch then we have frameless doors but how's the door closing sound oh, still interesting although it's frameless then interior all animal free here really cool this is a soft touch leatherette styling then we have the dynamica microfiber on the inside here this is a trim with a matte wood that brings some cozy feeling, but of course you can also go for a sportier styling if you like. Clicking sounds for the window levers. Best Audi build quality, really cool. Here's some space for bottles and so on. Then you have an e-tron GT entry badge here for this model. And once again, the styling with the matte wood right there. And this animal-free interior, by the way, would be standard for the US with Dynamica microfiber. Zoom more to that, but first the steering wheel, flat bottom, microfiber, great sporty grip. Zoom more also to the instruments and so on. Next highlight, the seats. So you have in Europe, Germany, a standard sport seat that is not available animal-free. And then you have here these seats. They are the Sport Seats Plus with more shoulder accentuations. This seat form is standard for the US models, for all e-tron GT, and also standard for the RS model. Here for the normal e-tron GT, this seat is an option, but you should go for it because then you can get either this one here, the fabric setup, some leather on the outside, fabric on the inside with an interesting structure here, like stamped in with contrast stitches and so on. So really cool. Or you can get it with a Dynamica microfiber on the inside, like on the steering wheel. That would be the standard for the US model. And in the studio episode, I was first a little bit disappointed because it's not standard for all the models. However, 
If it's standard for the US model, that means that most e-tron GT worldwide will be sold animal free. And this is a huge paradigm shift for Audi because they show you now, yes, we were very late to the party to make interiors more sustainable, but now they make it better than ever before. And the quality of the fabric material here is astonishing. And also the seating comfort is better. Also just for practical reasons, it is somehow you know a lighter seating feeling feeling um, it is better for the climate comfort it stays cooler in summer and warm in winter and interesting thing also because when you think about yeah more petroleum in use now the floor mats here and also what's under the floor mats 100 percent recycling material called eco econyl this is made from old fishing nets and residuals of textile industry and so on 100% recycling share. And also for the seat surface and underneath, 100% recycling, here at least for the fabric surface, just the Dynamica surface has a little bit less of recycling share then. So it really shows us we can have more sustainable, more animal-free interior with getting actually better functionality and better comfort at the same time using more recycling share. That's how it's done nowadays. Really amazing. Then, steering wheel. This is one of the things where I say, is it maybe an Audi Porsche? Because here, underneath the steering wheel, this mechanism for changing the height here and getting the steering wheel towards you, this is Porsche alike. But that's the only Porsche thing here in that interior. Other than that, Audi has their own accentuations. And already the seat form here and how the you know the, you know how the structure of the fabric is is definitely better looking and better feeling than in the Porsche. And as for adjusting the seat, the base seat is called eight-way seat because it can be moved in eight different ways. This one here, 14 ways, again, standard in the US and standard for the RS model. And also then available with the two animal free options, either here with the fabric or with the Dynamica microfiber. And the 18-way seat looks the same, just you can adjust the side bolsters. That then is not available with the animal free option. And headroom. Here with the panoramic roof, plenty headroom left with one with A6, 6 with one. When I move to the side here, that gets a little bit closer then. This one is standard, by the way, with the panoramic roof, cannot be opened. It also has, you know, a sun reflecting surface. You can also go for a carbon fiber roof. That's, you know, saves about 12 kilograms in a high part of the vehicle. So it brings down the center of gravity. Yeah, if that really plays another role when the <laughs> heavy batteries in the bottom anyway yeah the panoramic roof is cooler from the inside to look to the outside the carbon fiber roof is of course you know when you show off to your friends and they see oh wow you have a carbon fiber roof interior overview and this is where the audi e-tron gt is completely different really if you compare it to the porsche taycan once again awesome matte wood insert here but if that looks too old school for you I found really cool with this, you know, Scandinavian furniture design together with the fabric seats. But again, you can also go for a sportier setup here in, you know, gray or black style or whatever. Piano lacquer here being used. Then the 10.1 inch infotainment system here with touch. Zoom more details to that. On the left side, we have 12.3 inch digital instruments, all standard. Once again, the steering wheel, compact size. Right side to control the volume, the voice input. Left side to control the digital instruments. Soon. A detailed look, as I said. Also beautiful with the Dynamica microfiber here on top of the hood, uh, of the of the instrument hood. This is also really cool. And then my favorite thing here in the interior, yes, a manual climate unit. And this is to me the biggest advantage in comparison to the Porsche Taycan, where you have that really annoying screen to change, change the temperature here. Straightforward user interface. Not everything has to go into the touch screen. Then the Audi Drive Select placed in a lower part here where you can pick the different driving modes. And the thing is, it would be cool to have a button for that on the steering wheel. That is actually better with the Porsche or with the petrol RS models where you have an RS button at the steering wheel. But here, no button for the drive modes at the steering wheel, no matter if you're on the base or in the RS model. This is a really interesting shifting lever. I'm just putting it like this for the D mode or here for the reverse um, or like, you know, really slightly to the neutral mode and then back to the park mode once again. You have this volume slider here for the passenger. Whoa. Yeah, that goes quite quickly. So <laughs> pay attention to that volume slider. Then you have the adaptive cup holders right here. 
again, great build quality and small middle console. Uh, this is one design flaw. Um, you have two USB-C chargers and then I would connect your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with wireless function because with the cable it gets more complicated. And here, this is really narrow here. Um, you have to squeeze your phone in there or get it out again. Uh, yeah. Um, but at least this is then also the inductive charging pad. So when you put it right here, it's already charging. Audi Virtual Cockpit here, fully charged and projected range. Yeah, through and eighth, so 400 kilometers, 250 miles. And they have a very good overview of what you're seeing right here. You are very flexible because you can have, for example, also the GPS in there. And just with the left thumb, you can zoom in and out with this toggle wheel change the whole view like this as well so whatever you prefer or like this yeah i mean if i would have the gps i would probably then just go with the gps view you can also have it just on the left side so yeah what's your favorite view and you can also get a head-up display here with the speed or a loud speed oh just five kilometers an hour too bad we'll find another spot later on then the main infotainment the system is very responsive and also quite quick. This is the Apple CarPlay view. You can also get the Android Auto, both wireless. And there's a 16 speaker B&O system available. Let's listen to that. Ooh, awesome. Wow, that is really amazing. Wow, such a, wow, wow. really impressed by this really true sound really cool then the audi main menu like this you can have this main menu i rather use this here on the side to access the gps for example here we also have the satellite view like this but you can also use this main menu this has a quite good overview um, here the car settings once again if you go to the audi drive select also accessible in the lower part you can see here the air suspension if you have one equipped with that standard for the rs it raises or goes down for example in dynamic mode or in the efficiency mode for you know better wind efficiency it's the lowest one then here so about 2.2 centimeters so one and a half inches goes lower and the same as i said also in dynamic mode it also goes lower than in the normal mode what i also tend to do is for example i want to have a carplay hotkey on the left side so i do it like this hold it and then put it here to the left side menu and then i can also always done then access the apple carplay right there now to the rear door and by the way a front insulation glass is standard but here for the sides and for the sides also at the rear this is then an option you see here this dual insulation layer then even more calmness in the interior and the rear interior also has in the fabric styling here the same cool styling very interesting structure single seat styling but you can see you can also use this emergency seat so to speak and then also soft touch here at the rear door um, not super soft but also not entirely hard but it's a very high class structure then the microfiber once again here and you can see here these are called foot garages so they left spaces in the battery same as in the Porsche Taycan that you can put your feet under the seat then right there and let me take a test seat I have the seat as I would be driving with one which is 86 or 6 with 1 and indeed I fit in here very well no problem now I can really enjoy also the panoramic roof. Um, to the sides here, this is the only thing that gets close, so you have to move your head a little more towards the middle, and then, yeah, you can live with that also headroom-wise. It's actually quite cozy in here, a little bit racing style also for the rear seats, definitely. This middle seat here is quite stiff, and you have a substantial middle tunnel where they put some of the battery. Yeah, this is not that ideal, but four people will usually be enough for this vehicle you can fold the seats already from here like this one third two thirds split and the middle console houses another climate unit and here for the rear passengers with once again as we know from audi nice clicking sounds whoa and once again here the panoramic roof is always the coolest when you sit in the rear and look to the front then two more details here Cup holders, also adaptive, and then you can also fold this one down for a ski hatch like this. The trunk, 405 liters, it's not too high. Here, have this 
net where you can secure things. I put a backpack inside, you see it does fit in here height-wise. I already folded two thirds of the seat, uh, also the ski hatch available, so you can also load longer things through. Then, if you remove this net, by the way, there's another storage underneath, a small one. And also these sides here, you can put things in. Then some measurements. The height here, see, is about 18 inches or 45 centimeters. Then this is here a meter, this, um, you know, but you can see not quite. So 90 centimeters for the width and 35 inches in this area here, which is the crucial one, definitely. And the normal length of the trunk to the rear seats, 42 inches or 106 centimeters. And the absolute length, of course, it's not a short vehicle. Therefore, here we go. That's quite substantial, 190 centimeters or 75 inches. And to open the trunk, you have to go to the inside of the driver's door and then press this button. And then you have here 81 liters in the trunk area. Goes also deep in there and of course, for example, suitable for the charging cables. And now more color and trim choices. Here we have all colors available. You see here, starting from the white and then to the Daytona gray we shown to you, the tactical green. Here, for example, also our main vehicle color for today, the Kimura gray. Then we have the Ascari Blue, this would be a stronger blue tone, and also a Tango Red, we also know that from other Audi models. And as for the interior trim, the main trim for today was this one here with the fabric and the structure, really soft. This would be the Dynamica, the microfiber option, which is also standard then for the US seat. So we have this one in the middle, it maybe looks a little bit more premium-like. Uh, this is a little bit more breathable than this one, this is a little bit warmer in winter but then this one is cooler in summer, so it really depends on what you like. And then the interior choices, we had the main for the matte wood today, but you can also go for the sportier carbon fiber, or then here for two silver tones. And then even more details to the seat, once again, because we have a sample right here. It's cut open, and you can see why it's also a little bit more plush. So the background is also even more recycling share, and how it's done. We have the PT bottles, 120, PT bottles in the whole vehicle with the floor mats and so on, then you can get these pellets from that and also combine it with some residues from the textile industry and then you transform it into the, you know, in the, the raw material and for the seat and put together with this one with the contrast stitches and so on. Very brief process, but that's how it's done. Welcome to Thomas's e-Active Driving Lounge, Audi e-tron GT. And let's put this electric launch control and put it to the real, real speed. Left foot on the brake, right on the throttle, let's go. Whoa, that was 120 kilometers an hour. Whew! That went quick and of course, rather silent. We are in the dynamic mode. It gives some kind of electric sound, but not as much as in the Porsche Taycan. And the cool thing is, we have two electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear, quattro, and the one in the rear also has a two-speed transmission. So that's very rare in the electric segment. Here now, 90 kilometers, so about like 55 miles an hour, and so we are already at speed and we will accelerate it out to 200 kilometers now, 125 miles. Let's go. Plop, that's it. Wow. So amazing performance. The, the electric sound really, really subtle. I think that's actually a good, good thing and so calm and collected. I mean, yes, super fast, but at the same time, very controlled, you know, from the electric all-way drive. Now at, you know, like 170 kilometers an hour, so over 100 miles per hour. Of course, the wind noise is somewhat picking up, but still reasonably silent here, considering the speed, and the car is so stable on the road, really feels like a supercar. Difference indeed, already feeling right now to the Porsche Taycan, 
the suspension even in a dynamic mode is softer so um, it feels very sporty but the Taycan is more race car like whereas this one here more transport Gran Turismo the name says GT the energy consumption here at these really really high speeds 180 kilometers an hour is by the way around 40 something kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers that's around 64 kilowatt hours on 100 miles that means at this speed the car would run yeah like 200 kilometers or 100 some yeah 125 miles uh, with really like super high speed motorway all the time I mean, yeah, that's of course a big difference then to a, a petrol vehicle in this performance segment where you could drive really high speeds for way longer time, definitely, you know. But then again, when you put the speed to around 120, 130 kilometers an hour, so like 80 miles an hour, then you have a energy consumption of about 25 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. So, you know, that's then rather in the 40 um, something kilowatt hours on 100 miles and then you can score some 300 kilometers of range or some 200 miles of range and then when they go even lower like 80 90 kilometers an hour or like 60 miles an hour something like that in this reason or city traffic then you go to the rather you know closer maximum range of 400 kilometers and 250 miles with some 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or some 30 something kilowatt hours on 100 miles. These are the energy consumption facts. Whew. Got them done. And once again, we're at 150 kilometers an hour, German motorway, unlimited speed, once again. Still the speed is coming and now a lane change at over 200 kilometers an hour so stable here it feels like nothing you know once again back super precise from the steering Michelle's like like way to go man so also fun for the passengers of course in this vehicle and calm collected and still very comfortable and that's also on a longer motorway journey i would prefer this one here over the porsche taycan because it is softer from the suspension and just remember guys, I'm doing this valuation here, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and it's like, are we there yet? It's like, it's like, feels like nothing. It's almost boring because it's so um, sophisticated. You know, of course, yeah, it's the Germans. We are, <laughs> we are used to these speeds at some point, but uh, this car gives you such a, you know, such a really, subtle feeling yeah i must say one of the you know some of the big luxury sedans they're a little bit better as for the noise insulation at higher speeds so i recently had also had like the the audi s8 this is also more silent at higher speeds if you think about the a6 a7 a8 but then when you for example put it here like to 150 kilometers an hour um this is like a really relaxed scenario then and yeah <laughs> it's still a very high speed, you know. So the only thing here with the electric sports cars are, wait a minute, I'll show you one more full acceleration right here. Getting off this motorway and then I'll get on again. Good recuperation, of course, when I'm on the brakes. So the only thing here about the electric vehicles, the electric sports vehicles, I'd call, call them that way, is that you don't have a high range when you're driving long, longer time high speed. That's the catch. Definitely, and you have to, you know, use the recharging, supercharging, and so on. Yeah, not called supercharging at Audi, of course. And yeah, what about the difference to a Tesla? I mean, the acceleration is better than the Tesla. The RS model, of course, is a little bit quicker. But I mean, look at that here once again. Launch control, all used once again. This one is already super quick. Of course, can't complain about that. One hundred forty kilometers now, and I'm not sure if you picked that up on camera, but we could feel it where the car changed to the second gear for the rear motor. You know, because usually with the electric vehicle, it's like, and you feel nothing. And when you have the petrol cars, 
you like and here we could feel that really in the rear when the car was shifting and this gives you some kind of classic feeling so to speak so let's accelerate it out once more and you can repeat it repeat it repeat it it doesn't do anything to that the new Tesla Model S Plaid will be even more extreme, more extreme than any other EV in the acceleration. But the big difference, Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron to the Tesla is, you are so much more agile here. The whole car feels more sophisticated in the driving experience. As for the agility, it's incredible. I could directly go to the Nürburgring Nordschleife with that and it would cope with any corner. It sits so well on the road. The suspension is super comfortable and super sporty at the same time and usually that's an oxymoron you know you can't do that but here it is actually the case so the name Gran Turismo out of each one GT is really true and that is to me once again you know speaks for this vehicle and you know against the Taycan as sibling the Taycan is also an awesome drive no doubt about that but really, especially suspension-wise, I feel more comfort here. This, by the way, interesting is a testing area here, um, for an electric highway where trucks are being recharged, you know, like trains, you know, from above. Pretty interesting uh, pilot testing area here in the north of Germany. Yeah, fits to our electric topic here for today. So once again, more comfortable than the Taycan. Also, the fabric seating service is a little bit better than the Taycan, told you earlier. And if you compare it to the Tesla, Tesla is better as for range and efficiency. The electric motors are more efficient than the ones that the Germans put now in the first generation. However, driving agility, driving dynamics wise, Porsche and Audi definitely lead the Tesla, no matter if it's the, if it's the S or the, or the 3. So these are the main differences then to the competitors. And then petrol engine again, so much driving fun, so much agility. So as for the driving experience, yes, you do not have the V8 sound or something. That's a big difference. And of course, less range at higher speeds. That's the main difference to petrol engine, sports car. Other than that, the pure driving experience and the agility is definitely even better here. Low center of gravity. Rear axle steering also with an option right here, giving more stability at higher speeds, more agility at lower speeds. Yeah, what a flawless drive really. And when we get to a supercharger, by the way, if the battery, now the battery is probably already hot, but if it's not hot enough, the car will actually heat up the battery, prepare it to about 30 degrees Celsius. Um, so like, I think it's like, uh, yeah, like 86 degrees Fahrenheit and then the char fast charging is you know, at the most efficient and optimum point you can directly have the, the full capacity and how does that work the car is not using the battery power for that that's good you do not lose any range but there's a heat pump in this vehicle and actually they have four different cooling cycles and they are preparing then the battery for you know the the optimum charging that's actually a very cool thing to do yeah we'll take a look at the charging process and of course we also still have some more urban driving for you yay some more urban driving or urban motorways here and it's really a pleasure to get along with also in the city traffic or in more dense areas big difference to the porsche taycan is the suspension is set on a softer note right here so it doesn't feel less sporty in a way i mean it still feels like a sporty vehicle but it feels more gt as the name says than the porsche taycan because the suspension is just a little bit softer at the same time the steering is super direct and precise so they always said yeah go in the next slalom please <laughs> even if you can't um yeah and then of course you have the different driving modes which is changing how the suspension is being set here dynamic mode again lower and stiffer and just more responsive even and also as for this sound profile so here once again we have more often how can we say electric 
scrolling you can also go to the individual setting and edit that and then have here the sound profile subdued balanced or dynamic and then you can also individualize it if you like that sound profile or not and michelle for example is a big fan of the sound profiles so um, i rather say yeah with electric vehicles i don't really need it but i would love some custom sounds yeah custom sounds i mean i always ask myself i mean why is it not possible to set like a v8 sound it's like you know why not you don't have to do it or like star wars spaceship sound or something why not you know so why not being a little bit more playful with that kind of thing you know as for the recuperation here by the way um, usually their philosophy is here for the e-tron let it roll so there's not in the standard setting not a harsh recuperation you lift your throttle and the car is rolling and you do the regenerative braking when you're using the brakes first of all the recuperation is being used if you need more braking power then it also uses the real brakes however you can also change it a little bit while driving directly here with the shifting pedals for example pressing them twice or pulling them twice here there's more recuperation you also see it in the instruments and then the car is decelerating a little bit more um, I mean it really depends on the philosophy you are taking you can also change that um, with Tesla for example their standard philosophy is a one pedal driving feeling and a strong recuperation here Audi rather wants to catch the existing Audi customers and say maybe there's not such a big transition to driving an electric vehicle and you rather use it with a two pedal driving feeling however what's also cool is that the car in a way can also do it in an automatic way when you're using the cruise control then also the regenerative braking <laughs> well, yeah, th this is situations where I use the brakes myself um, let's see here for example yeah, here at the moment rolling is always depending on the speed uh, as well speed camera you can also set the cruise control of course like this here and then car is ruling this predictive control anyway if you have the highest assistance systems built you have everything here blind spot monitor when you use the turning indicators also flashing you also have the predictive assistant that means that for example when there's like an intersection coming the car is reducing the speed in advance to be more efficient and so on so Audi is also setting things on that most people will go for the more elaborated assistance systems function and then also have this automatic recuperation built in this area so um, yeah well of course you can also change a lot um, but usually they thought about something with the base setup they're putting in this vehicle and you know rolling is more efficient if you want to roll if you want to decelerate of course it's better to use the regenerative braking but here as you can also see it's being used when I use the normal brakes right here the car doesn't feel too big or too heavy that's also the thing we have experienced a lot of times with electric vehicles they are heavy with the battery central um, you know in the center of the car but since it brings down the center of gravity so much they feel more agile they feel sportier that's definitely always a thing here also when I'm trying to sneak in this GTI lets us in thank you <laughs> I, I, some, I tend to say thank you with the turret with the headlight lights for example when people let me in and you're definitely attracting a lot of attention with this vehicle it's a completely new styling and so on really interesting also as for the light signature and I mean it is in a way you feel it could also be made for the racetrack but cruising here in the city you also feel pretty much at home rear exit steering so it feels like it would have a shorter wheelbase although it does not one thing i mean the fabric seats bring more comfort than the stiff animal skin seats that's for sure however if you now compare it to let's say you go for an audi a7 or so these plastic sedans will give you more comfort than the gt stylings here 
Um, since the whole chassis here is more Porsche-like, definitely, you still feel this you know, technology uh, siblinghood. <laughs> if you sit very well in Porsches, you will also sit well in here. The seat itself, from the surface and from the, you know, the fabric and how it's you know, made from the structure, this absolute own Audi development, but the whole geometry you have here when sitting in the vehicle, you feel this is more a Porsche geometry. And if you tend to have back pains in Porsche, which I have a lot, <laughs> then um, it's also not the best geometry for you here in the Audi e-tron GT. If you say, yeah, the Porsche sport seats, they're really sporty, but I feel totally comfortable, comfortable in them, then you also feel at home right here. So again, the fabric seat is the back best pick also for the comfort but I would wish more seating comfort in general. These sport seats are sporty and they're very slim and you have a yeah, very sporty geometry seating wise here in that car. So that's a thing where I can say their classic sedan, for example, would be better just in the seating comfort. Everything else is really a very flawless driving experience here also um, in the city. As for the one pedal driving feeling, you can also surely argue for and against it. Um, once again, you can also set it here by the steering wheel. Let's see, with the Porsche usually was resetting it. And here, yeah, it's actually keeping, it, keeping them. So you don't have to set them each time once again. But even here now, it's not a super strong deceleration then. And we had some urban motorway and some dense traffic right here and the energy consumption here at the moment is 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometers and that is indeed equaling when you think about 85 kilowatt hours is the battery 20 times 4 would be 80 so you see it fits with this projection of in this case an even a little bit more than 400 kilometers or a little bit more than 250 miles of course temperature now is about 11 0.5 degrees Celsius is also quite suitable as for that. Now we emptied the battery for you to about 20%. Yeah, we enjoyed doing that for you. <laughs> Busted. So, and then let's open the fast charging side. And we are here at the Ionity fast charger. This is the, they are fast charging network then for Europe. Yeah, a little bit complicated here with the pole. So, here we go. Electrify America, it's then for you, for the US customers. So, we're right there. And then I have a charging card by Audi, the e-tron charging card. So, you can get one of these and, for example, for the European customers, it's 31 cents per kilowatt hours then across Europe. So, you have a fixed price then for all European Ionity charging stations. That's, I think, you know, um, quite cool thing to have then for the char fast charging. So now communication between the fast charger and the vehicle and you know these um, cables are sometimes even water cooled because they generate so much heat. In. Last time with the Porsche Taycan we reached about 240 kilowatt. That is of course pretty quick. Here also the battery status of the vehicle is being realized. Yeah 244. That's of course really, really massive, 245. Nice. And then you can, whoa, whoa, yeah, there we go. That's awesome, that's a new record here. That's really, really fast. So then we just need a couple of minutes and we are basically once again good to go. So now we are charging 100 kilometers or 60 miles in five minutes. And here, when I, for example, set the battery target to 60%, 13 minutes remaining. So it would roughly take us 15 minutes from 20 to 60%. Um, yeah, okay, let's change the target, for example, to this famous 80%. So let's go back and the car is recalculating that. Yes, it is active. Taking a second for the new, there it is. So. Uh, and now, then here from the 20 to 80 percent, see a little bit over 20 minutes. And just if you go to 100 percent, 
then you would need a full hour. And that's always the thing with the lithium ion batteries. If you keep them with between 20 and 80%, it's best for the battery. And also this 10 or 20% to 80% charge is so much shorter than this 80 to 100%. However, the 250 kilowatt doesn't stay all the way. You can see here now we are at 40% and then we're slowing down to 150 kilowatt, but that's still very, very fast. And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi e-tron GT. From the exterior, really striking, a more angular design than the sibling, the Porsche Taycan, for example, and really flat and low. And on the interior, a great build quality, also an own Audi styling, so really different from the Porsche Taycan. Great with the paradigm shift that they also offer an animal-free interior and that also, you know, a really substantial share of the Audi e-tron that is being sold will have the animal free interior fabric then the choice also for Europe or the Dynamica microfiber and in the US standard for the Dynamica microfiber not yet with the fabric maybe at the later stage and also with the great microfiber steering wheel you have more comfort also in these seats and in general of course when you compare it to an let's say Audi A7 for example or an S7 these cars have a little bit more long-term comfort. This is still a very sports-oriented vehicle, seating-wise, and has more the Porsche geometry. So I don't feel super comfortable as for the seating geometry. So for long-term, I would still prefer, you know, like a vehicle like an A7. However, from the whole philosophy, I would definitely prefer this. This, when you want the sportier touch. Suspension-wise, however, this is here super comfortable. It's very comfortable and sporty at the same time. This to me driving wise is also different to the Porsche Taycan. This one here a true GT character, more comfort, whereas the Porsche more has a little bit more of you know yeah racing style. Difference to the Tesla is to me that the agility of the driving is way better and also this mix of comfort and sportiness. Of course the Tesla's even quicker in the acceleration although you also can get the RS model here. And the Tesla is more efficient and has a better range, especially when you drive higher speed on the motorway. However, you can get along with this range in good conditions and when you don't exceed the speed, as I said, about 400 kilometers or about 250 miles. And if you drive faster or it's winter time, it's really cold outside, then rather towards 300 kilometers or something less than 200 miles. So. That's what you get, that's what you have. Overall, a super impressive vehicle, a very flawless driving experience, and once again, more sustainability at Audi, finally, and really great what they've done with this interior. A very exciting car, and I can really say, what there, was there another flaw? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in the middle console where you put your smartphone, that's a little bit narrow, that's maybe Audi, you know, flaw in this respect we, we discovered. Other than that, we've seen you know, when we drove around so many different regions here in the north uh, part of Germany, this car is catching so much attention. Everyone's like, whoa, what's that? Everyone's like putting out the smartphones, taking photos and so on, or asking, like, what's that vehicle? So definitely you get a lot of attention with that one. So clearly this is driving here a sports luxury car and driving it with a better conscience. So, I really hope you enjoyed this episode for today. Tune in next time.